Alright, so if you know me or watch the channel, you'll know how often I recommend the Rode NT1. I recommend this microphone more than any other microphone and for good reason. It's a great sounding microphone with a relatively flat response at an even better price point. I was actually about to do a full review of this microphone and then Rode reached out to me and sent me over this the fifth generation Rode NT1. Now, full disclosure, I'm not getting paid for any of this. They haven't told me what to say and they won't be seeing this video before I release it for everyone else to see. These are all my own thoughts, but they did, however, send the mic over to me for free and I do get to keep it. So what makes the fifth generation Rode NT1 different from the standard Rode NT1? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Now I'll talk all about the differences and then I'll run the microphone through all of the usual tests that I do when reviewing microphones. So. Let's get into it. To start things off, what makes this microphone different? Well, it's an XLR microphone and a USB microphone in one. Currently, you're hearing the microphone in its USB mode. And let me just say, the USB cable that this microphone came with was actually very long, which was super refreshing because there's a lot of USB microphones out there that come with a really short cable that will just make you really angry. Most people like the convenience of a USB microphone because that means you don't need to buy an audio interface, which means you don't need to learn what an interface does or how to properly use one. Most of the time for voice actors, I advocate against USB microphones for many reasons that I covered in another video, Best Microphone for VoiceOver Part 1. However, that's all about to change thanks to the Rode NT1 fifth generation here. But before we get into one of the awesome tricks that this microphone has up its sleeve, let me just say this microphone ends up being the literal perfect microphone for me to recommend to all of my students going forward. Why is that, you might ask? Well, a lot of my students, when they sign up for my classes, home studio setup, or private coaching, have already bought a USB microphone, and once they take my class, they end up having to go out and purchase another microphone, an XLR microphone, and then an audio interface to plug that microphone into to give them greater flexibility with their audio among many other things. Well, this microphone completely solves that problem altogether. Now a student can buy this microphone to start out and use it in its USB mode for as long as they would like to before later buying an audio interface to pair with this microphone. See, now they don't need to buy a brand new microphone and audio interface. They just need to buy an interface whenever they're ready because the Rode NT1 fifth generation supports both. And both modes sound fantastic. So, what was one of those tricks I mentioned that this microphone has up its sleeve? Well, it can record all the way up to 32-bit float. James, I have no idea what that is. All that means is if you set it up properly, it's essentially an unclippable microphone. As in, you won't clip your audio when you have to get really loud. So, let's take a video game read, for example. A lot of voice actors have issues with video game and animation auditions because, in a lot of cases, the copy will require them to speak at a normal volume and then suddenly need to get loud. In extreme situations, you may even need to whisper and then yell, and anyone who's ever tried to record something like this knows the problems that you'll encounter. Now, with audio that requires you to yell and then get really quiet, there's definitely a few different ways to go about this, but with this microphone's capabilities, you can just kind of go for it. Like this. Oh, am I done? You come into my home? You set off all my traps. It took me a very long time to set up, by the way. And worse yet, you've completely put me at risk of infection. <laughs> I've survived for over 20 years, and now I'm going to be done in by some reckless drifter and his little brat that can't keep her mouth shut. Great. Thanks to both of you setting off all my traps, we now have a bunch of infected outside waiting to tear us apart. Good job. Now, those lines were all over the place, and normally you'd have to do one of a few different methods to record something like that and have everything come out properly. As in, not have some of the audio too low, and then some of the audio be clipped. Because if the audio was too low, when you bring it up in the end, you're also going to bring up the noise of the room, which will give you a really high noise floor and not sound good. And when you get too loud, the audio would distort because of the fact that you clipped your audio. But because this microphone supports 32-bit float, and it has the Revolution preamps that go into the ADD converters that allow it to focus on really loud audio sounds, medium sounds, and really quiet sounds simultaneously, it's essentially like recording with multiple microphones all set at different gain points. And because of this, you can just run straight through all of those lines and not need to worry about getting too loud or really quiet. It's awesome. It's all recoverable audio. Now, let's go through and recover this audio in a way that would have otherwise been impossible.
Oh, am I done? You come into my home? You set off all my traps It took me a very long time to set up, by the way. And worse yet, you've completely put me at risk of infection. <laughs> I've survived for over 20 years, and now I'm going to be done in by some reckless drifter and his little brat that can't keep her mouth shut. Great. All right, everyone stay down and be quiet. Thanks to the both of you setting off all my traps, we now have a bunch of infected outside waiting to tear us apart. Good job. All right, it also has a bunch of onboard DSP, digital signal processing, which can be really helpful if you're a content creator like a YouTuber, podcaster, live streamer, or something like that. However, if you're a voice actor, I'd steer clear of all that. If you don't know why, I can definitely explain with another video in the future, but for content creators, this processing can be really helpful. Just remember, while these features can be really handy, you can't unbake a cake. As in, if you decide to use front-end processing when recording, the processing will be baked into the recorded audio and can't be undone. The only way to undo all of it at that point would be to literally just re-record the audio entirely. All right, now let's get into the typical microphone tests and review this microphone. It's a side address microphone. It has both USB-C and XLR capabilities. Its polar pattern is cardioid. Its frequency range is 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. It has an equivalent noise level of 4 dBA. In other words, it's a very, very quiet microphone as in its self noise is incredibly low. This microphone has the lowest self noise in the world. It can record in 24-bit or 32-bit floating point. It can record in the following sample rates, 48, 96, 192, though the Aphex digital signal processing is only available at 48,000 kilohertz and 24-bit. All right, let's see how this microphone handles plosives. Peter Piper popped his peas, resulting in plosives. All right, now let's test this microphone's proximity effect. All right, now I'm roughly 10 feet away from the Rode NT1 fifth generation. All right, now I'm roughly six feet away from the Rode NT1 fifth generation. All right, now I'm about three feet away from the Rode NT1 fifth generation. All right, and now I'm about six inches away from the Rode NT1 fifth generation. All right, and now I'm right up on the Rode NT1 fifth generation. I'm curious to see how the bass response is affected when I get this close to the microphone versus being really far away from the microphone. All right, and now the Rode NT1 is boomed out of frame, so you can't see it, much like you would with a shotgun microphone. This microphone was definitely not made to be used like this, but this is how it sounds. All right, so now let's do a polar pattern test with this microphone. The Rode NT1 fifth generation has a cardioid polar pattern, meaning as you get to the side and the back of the microphone, it's going to try and reject you. So let's see how that sounds. All right, I'm speaking into the front of the Rode NT1 fifth generation. Now I'm getting around to the side of the Rode NT1 fifth generation. And now I'm getting to the back of the Rode NT1 fifth generation. I should sound pretty far away and boxy. Now I'm back to the other side of the Rode NT1 and then back around to the front of the Rode NT1 fifth generation. And that's how the cardioid polar pattern sounds in this microphone. All right, and this is what the Rode NT1 fifth generation sounds like in an untreated space. Obviously, this isn't ideal. My voice is bouncing off and reflecting off of all of these hard surfaces and back into the microphone, which in some cases will sound like this, an echo chamber. In some cases, it'll sound boxy, sometimes muddy, boomy. Depends on the situation. Definitely not ideal. But now, let's head up to my booth and see what this microphone sounds like in an acoustically treated space. All right, and this is what the Rode NT1 fifth generation sounds like in an acoustically treated environment. I have many various different methods of acoustic treatment in this space so that my voice isn't bouncing off all of the hard surfaces and reflecting back into the microphone, which would give you a boxy sound or make you sound like you're in an echo chamber, much like the last space that I was just in. But this is how it sounds in an acoustically treated environment. All right, so here we have the Rode NT1 fifth generation and we have the standard Rode NT1. Now, Rode did say that there should be no audible difference between these two microphones because the internal guts are the same, but I knew that you guys would probably wanna hear it for yourself. So here's a comparison between the Rode NT1 fifth generation and the standard Rode NT1. Here's how they sound compared to each other in the AB comparison. And so now you can hear for yourself. What are your thoughts? All right, and would I recommend this microphone for content creators? 100% without a doubt. Like I said earlier, this is pretty much the perfect microphone, in my opinion. It has both USB and XLR capabilities, depending on which way you wanna go with it. It offers 32-bit floating point, as you just saw, it's unclippable, and it's just a great sounding microphone. Like I said, I love the Rode NT1 already. It's like my most recommended microphone, so now they've just upped their game. And the craziest part of all of this is the Rode NT1 was already an amazing 
amazing microphone and it only costs like 270 or 250 dollars something like that and then they came out with the Rode NT1 fifth generation here they added so many features it's both USB and XLR 32-bit float unclippable and they kept it at the same price point I mean like there's not many companies out there that you could say did something like that so thank you Rode this is awesome. And then of course, would I recommend this microphone for voice actors? Literally same answer. Yes, 100%. This microphone takes care of everything. It literally checks all the boxes. I, I can't recommend it enough. All right. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video. And as far as the Rode NT1 fifth generation is concerned, well, you know what they say.